Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer and we are getting very, very close to rhubarb season. Even though it doesn't really look it outside right now, it's, well, maybe it does. It's rainy, but it's cold. Uh, I'm just hoping that things warm up. I went out and peeked at my rhubarb uh, a few days ago. I had to like pull back a bunch of leaves and there was just some little shoots that were just about a half inch sticking out. So anyway, it's gonna be rhubarb season soon. And I have quite a bit of rhubarb in my freezer and I thought I'd like to get some of that used up. So in this video over the course of a few days, I'm going to make all sorts of different rhubarb recipes from jelly to jam to rhubarb custard dessert, breads, and just some cobblers, or maybe not cobblers, but crunches and crisps, things like that. And I'm going to just show you all different things that you can do with rhubarb. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some rhubarb juice going in my um, Nutra steamer. This is the steamer that I have. It's by Back to Basics. I will link this in the description box. Sometimes Amazon does not have the Back to Basics brand. I believe I bought mine at Fleet Farm, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, there are other brands out there. They are all similar. I would just recommend that if you do pick up something like this to go with the stainless steel version. There's also a number of brands that have an aluminum version. So this is clean, but at one time I did boil it dry and so it looks a little funky inside there. But anyway, you just wanna get your the bottom pot filled three fourths full with water. And then you're gonna bring that to a boil. The next level here is like where the juice is collected. And then this is where you put all the fruit, has a little holes, and so what's going to happen, the whole process here is what happens is that as this water boils, it, it steams up through the center. So the steam is gonna come up through that little center opening there, and that is going to steam the fruit that's gonna be in this bowl here. And as long as the lid is on, it'll It'll just steam nicely and then the juice from the fruit will drip down into this little spot here and then after 40 minutes of uh, steaming time that I can start drawing off the juice through this tube. And I'll walk you through all of those steps here today. First, I'm just gonna get the rhubarb put in here. So I like to fill mine right up to the top. I really only need about three and a half cups of juice but I'm hoping to make more because then we can either use it just like as a mixer, that's really good with rhubarb. We also can, uh, I could make another batch of jelly. So I'm gonna get rhubarb put in the top here and we're gonna get that steaming. This is about 17 cups of frozen rhubarb. And I'm gonna get this turned on to high, get the lid on. And then what I'm waiting for is for steam now to come out here. It's going to take a while because it has to uh, warm up, you know, all that frozen fruit and everything. But as soon as the steam starts to come out of the top, then I'll set my timer for 40 minutes. And that's when I will draw off the first juice. While I wait for my juicer to start steaming so I can set the timer, I am going to get some rhubarb and sugar mixed together here because it has to sit overnight or for like 12 hours or something. So actually 12 hours from now would be 11 o'clock tonight. You can bet I will not be making <laughs> rhubarb jelly uh, tonight. Tomorrow I will actually make up some, what I just refer to as freezer jam, and I will show you more about that tomorrow. Okay, so you can see right here, it's just started to steam. And so I set my timer for 40 minutes. I have some jars ready and... So you always start drawing juice at the 40 minute mark. 
And then there's um, guidelines here for every fruit and a whole lot of different vegetables over here, how long you can continue to draw off juice. So for rhubarb, it says 70 minutes, so that would be the 40 plus an additional, uh, or at the 40 mark, then up to 70 minutes. So for 30 minutes, I'll be drawing off juice from here. And, um, and that's to get the best quality juice. We've actually drawn off longer, like with the cranberries. If you're not concerned about a real clear juice, you can press down on the fruit. You'll get a little bit of pectin through, um, but depending on what you're using it for, that can be good or a bad thing. But um, this is just a guideline to let you know about how long you should be drawing off juice. I'm just gonna turn this down just a smidge because we do not want to boil the bottom dry. So no rhubarb video would be complete if I did not make Warren's favorite rhubarb dessert ever, which is called Rhubarb Custard Dairy Bar, and it is in my cookbook. And there it is. If you want, you can always take a screenshot of that, or you can check the description box below and order a cookbook if you would like. I'm gonna put this in the oven to bake for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. Rhubarb from 2019, and that is why I'm wanting to use this up. These are the last two now from 2019, and then I have a whole lot of rhubarb down there from 2020. And last year, I didn't even cut rhubarb to freeze. So the goal here is to use up a lot of this and then to cut a whole bunch of fresh rhubarb for this year. I like to package up my frozen rhubarb in six cup portions. And the reason I do that is because this particular recipe calls for six cups of diced rhubarb. And then when I want to make this, my rhubarb is all ready to go. So this whole bag here is going to be used in the rhubarb custard dairy bar, but it's going to be a little bit before I get going on the custard here. And then the topping I won't put on until tomorrow. We're actually having another fish fry tomorrow night. And so uh, this is going to be one of the desserts that I'll serve at the fish fry. And it really is best if you let the custard set up really well, then put the topping on and let it chill really well. So it's not a dessert that you just decide in the morning, oh, I just want to have that later tonight. You do need to give it a little bit of time. I'm getting things set up to start making the rhubarb custard a filling. I do have the crust is in the oven right now set for 10 minutes and I just wanted to show you that this is uh, steaming you know it's boiling pretty hard so I did actually just turn my um, I turned the fire down just a little bit again I turned it down at first but now I turned it down a second time because and I did peak but if you're gonna lift up this um, this section of the pot here make sure that you use some pot holders or something so that the steam doesn't come up and burn your fingers okay definitely be careful for that because it it can burn you really really quick i'm not sure if you can see this but we do have juice already starting to pool in the tube here it does still have 23 minutes though to go before i can start drawing off the juice and since it's boiling so hard i'm actually going to turn it down one more notch <laughs> And then I do like to put the rhubarb custard on top of the crust as soon as the crust comes out. And since I only have about eight more minutes to get this going. So three eggs. I'll be doing one and a fourth cups of sugar. And since I'm using frozen fruit, which does have a tendency to have a little bit more uh, ice in it and to juice a little bit more, I'm gonna go with four tablespoons. My recipe says three to four tablespoons flour. That was three, okay. If I use fresh rhubarb, I usually only go with the three tablespoons. A quarter teaspoon of salt, and then I'm using one cup of heavy cream. You can use 2% milk or whole milk. I would not use 1% or skim with this though. Okay, I'm gonna pop this back in the oven for another 50 minutes until the custard is set. And the first quart of juice I do like to put back in and let it run through a second time. It just helps to uh, sterilize the tube. I'm gonna 
don't you just finish this? Now if I were going to be canning this juice, I would just um, put my lid, I'd wipe the rims, put the lid, put the ring on, and then I would put it into my water bath canner. I'd have to look up if it has to go for uh, 15 or 20 minutes uh, in the canner. I'm not sure exactly, but since I'm going to be actually using this to make jelly, and then also, I think, well, I have some other plans for it too, and we'll see if that all happens. Um, but I don't, you know, I can just put the plastic caps on here. I could put the metal um lids and bands really whatever option i wouldn't even have to put it into the canning jars i could just put it in like a big glass bowl put it in my fridge that way but this is just easy to handle in the jars so i set my timer again for 30 minutes and i'm just going to continue to let this steam and juice and i'll just keep drawing off like every time that this gets full which i see it's already filling up here so well, I, I have to put my camera down to do that because this is really hot. And you want to make sure that you hold on to the tube, otherwise it'll start, might start swinging this way and that way. So anyway, um, I'll just keep doing that for the next 30 minutes, or now it's only 26 minutes, and see how much juice we get in the end. Well, I'm finally getting back into the kitchen here, and I just wanted to show you how far down this rhubarb cooked. So look at that. It's like literally, let me see maybe an inch thick of rhubarb right now and that was all the way to the top granted the rhubarb was frozen so it probably took up a whole lot of space but anyway it really really cooks down now over here is the juice this is the last one that i drew off and it has a little bit more pectin in it, I can just tell, because it's got a little bit of a thickness, which is going to be perfect for making jelly. Now jelly is something you really only want to make one batch at a time. Trust me <laughs> on that one. So what I'm going to do is measure out three and a half cups of juice, which is probably going to be very close to what's in here right now. So that is two and a half. I'm going to get it right into my pot. Okay, so that is three and a half cups of rhubarb juice. And I know this is a ton of sugar, but that's just how jelly is. <laughs> and so I'm gonna put in four cups of sugar, plain old white sugar, and then I have one box of sure gel. So I will bring this to a full very, very hard rolling boil, and I'm going to stir it continuously until all of the sugar dissolves. And once the sugar is dissolved, then I will uh, pour it into my jelly jars and get it ready for water bath canning. Okay, it is at a full rolling boil, and this is why you want to use a nice large pot when making jellies or jams, because when it starts to boil, it boils. And what started out as only being like maybe two inches deep can quickly be five or six inches, five or six inches deep. So I'm just going to continue to stir this. Usually it takes about a minute at the full rolling boil before it's completely ready to come off and to be put into jars. So I'm water bath canning just in the same pot that I made 
the jelly in because I just have six, you know, half pints here and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Why bring such an enormous uh, water bath canner? You know, why bring that to a boil? I have all my jars in here. I will bring this to a boil and then I will put this onto a low, low boil. I'm going to have to check. I think it's... 15 minutes, but I'm going to double check for you right now. Okay, I just checked and it says 10 minutes. Now, I do want to make sure that wherever you are um, canning from and, you know, home preserving, always do your own research to look it up and see what um, what the recommendations are for your area for pressure canning. Uh, it's based on altitude, but I'm water bath today, water bath canning in a high acid fruit with plenty of sugar. So anyway, just do your research. Uh, I will link a couple books below like the ball uh, the ball what is it called ball book of home preserving and then there's also just the ball all blue book of canning which has a whole lot of information in and it's really what I tend to go to when I am looking for canning information so all right so I'm gonna uh, put a cover on this when it comes to a, a good boil I'll turn it down so it's just a nice gentle boil for 10 minutes I just washed up the bottom here of my steamer juicer and I'm doing this little trick um, where you put vinegar in and I'm going to bring that to a boil and then I'm going to do some washing. So I think I should cover it. Actually Warren's uncle told me about this and he said it works great so I'm hoping that it works great for me too. Well it is already boiling. I had the lid on and it was steaming pretty good. So I'm going to turn it off because I could see that that spot was already like boiling away. So I better swirl this maybe. And there it is. It's so beautiful. It is, it just needs to set up. I see I have one, two, three jars that already popped. I'm waiting for one, two, three more jars to pop here. And then it just needs to set up for a good 24 hours. And we'll check it. Hopefully it's nice and gelled. I could tell when it was coming off of the spoon. Oh, there was a pop. I could tell when it was coming not off the spoon, but off of the kettle when I was pouring it. As it was cooling, it was sheeting and that's a sign that it is gelling so yeah i just i'm looking forward to um, giving this a little wiggle tomorrow so the next recipe is streusel rhubarb bread this is also in my cookbook page 40. i'm showing it to you here so if you'd like you can take a screenshot of it like i said information for the cookbook is in the description box below okay so i'm going to get all of these ingredients into my KitchenAid mixer really just mix it like you would any bread. We're going to mix up the sugar, the fat, the egg, the milk, the vanilla, and then add in all the dry ingredients, adding in the rhubarb and the walnuts last. Cheers. Cheers. Let's try it. You've never had a mule? Are you working? 
Well, good morning. It's the next day, and I want to just give you a little recap on a couple things. So let's see what happened yesterday, if I can remember right. I started off the day by uh, getting rhubarb juice going, and let's just talk about that. I have a quart and about three-fourths left um, with the rhubarb juice. And from the rhubarb juice, I made jelly. I made six half pints of jelly. So usually jelly, I like to let it set for about 24 hours um, before, you know, thinking is it completely gelled as much as it's going to be. And so look at that. I think that that's a nice, it's a soft set, I would say, but it is still, um, a, it is still a jelly. It'll be very spreadable on toast or English muffins. And sometimes jelly will continue to set as it sits on the shelf. I also have a very wide range of what I think is acceptable jelly. I don't mind the jellies that are very, very firm, like super firm, take a scoop and it's not gonna fall off the spoon, all the way to a little bit of a softer set that's very, very spreadable on toast. Okay, I like it always. Then with the rhubarb juice, I also did try Moscow Mules and they were okay. I love Moscow Mules. Um, just in, in general, I love a, a Moscow mule. Um, I do think that the rhubarb juice, being that it was completely unsweetened, it could have had a little bit of sugar. So I think if I would use my rhubarb juice again to make Moscow mules, what I would do is put a sugar cube in it. It's just like I would make an old fashioned where I'd muddle a sugar cube in an orange wedge. I would use an actual fresh lime and do a lime wedge with the sugar cube, muddle that, then add in my rhubarb juice. And it would just give it a little bit of sweetness because um, ginger beer is very, I, you can't really say peppery, but it's very spicy. It's got a very, very strong ginger flavor. So if that's not really your thing, um, well then maybe you won't like Moscow Mule. But if it is your thing, if you like ginger a lot, um, sometimes it just tastes a little good with a little bit of sugar. All right, enough about that. So now, then I also got started on the rhubarb custard dairy bar for tonight. And I am going to take some Cool Whip out shortly. I have to remember to do that so that we can continue to get that made and chilling until this evening. And then I also did the rhubarb streusel bread. I can't remember if I said this recipe is also in my uh, cookbook. And what I did this time, I actually like this bread better if it's made in little loaves. I used to make it in a full loaf pan, like a nine by five loaf pan, but it just doesn't get all that high. And I think it's just, they're so much cuter in the little loaf pans. So anyway, that's what I typically do with this. And then um, I can put these in the freezer, not just with Saran Wrap. I'll put these in like a great big freezer bag and I can always give these away. And I think when the guys come in from turkey hunting, we'll probably slice into one of those as well. And then here is the rhubarb and sugar. I think yesterday I mentioned that I was gonna put this in the fridge. I did not do that because with it being frozen rhubarb, I didn't want it to still stay kind of frozen. I wanted it to juice completely. So I just covered it, set it on the counter overnight, and look at how juicy that is. That's gonna be perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in one box of red jello. I usually do a strawberry jello. Um, I used to be able to find cranberry jello and I like that as well, but I just can't find that anymore. So strawberry it is. I'm gonna bring the juicy rhubarb to a boil in this pot. This is the bottom of my juicer steamer. And I wanted to show you that yesterday, let's see, do we have good enough light there? Yesterday I boiled up the vinegar in here and anywhere that the vinegar actually touched, it actually got quite shiny again, but like the sides, let's see, can you see, can you see? There we go, that's a good spot. But the sides right here where the vinegar didn't necessarily like boil. I must not have sloshed it around enough. So after I make the jello, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put more vinegar in here. I'm going to do it again because I just want to get this stain off of here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.
As soon as this mixture comes to a boil, I'm going to add in the jello. Go, good morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. Good morning. How are you, Joel? Very good, camera. <laughs> you having a conversation with the camera? Crazy. You're crazy? Who's crazy? No. Are you crazy? Yes. Is mom crazy? No. No. Dad. Dad's crazy? Yeah. Yeah. I'll stir this until I can tell that everything is dissolved. I want the jello to be dissolved. I want all the sugars to be dissolved. So usually anywhere from one to two minutes. Once it comes back to a boil. And since I know that my kids will eat the um, this rhubarb freezer jam better if I puree it instead of having chunks of rhubarb. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna run this through um, my blender to get it all pureed and then I will put it into jars and I'm just gonna freeze it like that. Nothing. We heard some goblin, but. Yeah. Yeah. 